Hello, this is Julianne Hartman, and this is Tuesday morning, my favorite morning of the week so that I could spend time with you. Thank you guys so much for coming on board every day. You know, we have 10 teachers and we do 10 teachings. That's not even including the journey. That's not even including our guest speaker. So with that, that's like 12 seven days a week. That's pretty awesome when you can fulfill what the, what the, the plan that God gave you, you, when you can fulfill the plan that the Lord has instructed you to do. Boy, that's pretty awesome. It doesn't, you know, it's not, it's not like it's a drop in the bucket, you know, there's a lot of work to be done. And so I'm so thankful for um, my daughter, Sophia, that just works so hard and does so many wonderful things and is able to uh, just run this platform amazingly. And I see it says Julianne Butch. Well, Butch is always here. He's in my heart. He's not here physically, but he's in my heart. So anyway, that's kind of funny, but I don't know why it says that. I guess we put that on there for the anniversary, which I'd like to talk about the anniversary live stream was so much fun. Did you have fun? I did. It was so great to get everybody together, including you all. If you did not get a chance to watch it live, please go back and watch it on the on, on YouTube and Facebook, wherever it is, on our website, uh, healingjourneystoday.com, because it was so awesome and fun. And I know that you would get a lot out of it. So that was fun. And then also we had our new teacher come aboard Sunday night at five, at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And that is Lance Williams. And Lance was a guest speaker for a month, a couple months back. And he was so great and is in his heart to do this. This is like, this is his life, what he wants to do. And so the Lord said, call him and ask if he wants to do this weekly. So here he is. He started on Sunday and it is great. And I just know that you all got a lot out of him. He's just a great guy and his wife is just an angel sent from heaven, Emily. So anyway, so there's that. And then also we do have a new journey starting this uh, this Saturday, which is um, our friends Juan and Tara Bonilla. And it is talking about the prodigal child and what do you do as parents and what the, just the stuff they went through and where they are now. And it's awesome. So <clears throat> I know you're going to get a lot about out of that as well. So here we are. Oh, and then the last thing is we have a Healing Journeys Today live in-person conference, and that is June 17th and 18th, and you're all invited, and it's free. So I hope you all check that out and come aboard with us because we want to see you. We want to tangible, like tangibly be there in person together and not just, you know, by this Zoom call or this this uh, broadcast. We want to we want to be with you all in person so that we can talk to you and lay hands on you and command that sickness out of your body. And we want to, we just want to celebrate with you. We want to worship with you. We want to praise the Lord with you. We've got my daughter's amazing band coming. We've got some great new members coming in the band, which is going to be awesome. That's still small worship. And so it's all great. It's, it's just awesome what God is doing. So anyway, so today we're going to talk about the authority that makes you bold, all right? Because what's happening is, is that we, I've, I've said this before on my teachings, but I want to make sure that you hear this again, because you might not have heard it. But authority is not an attitude like, hey, you know, because trust me, I've had many attitudes and the boldness was not based on truth. It was based on an attitude, which really isn't, um, it's not meaty enough. It doesn't last. Let's put it that way. It doesn't last. Okay. Well, I've got to turn off my do not disturb. So I got to do that. So no one can bother us and start calling during the broadcast, but think about it. Uh, boldness is an attitude. Would you, do you get that? Like you've heard people say, maybe even about you, and you might have said before, man, that person is bold. Well, that might be true, but there's a couple different boldnesses that, um, that I want to address. Bold does not mean that you're coming from a place of authority. 
boldness for me back in the day when I was not a Christian, I was bold, but it came out of insecurity. So if I just sounded really loud, and if I just did things that not everybody else would do, if I would say things that not everybody else would say, right? Then people would be like, oh, I'm afraid of her <laughs> or she's bold. Don't get in her way. But when I started, okay, so then I realized that that was false. That was not even a real, that wasn't real. That was not a, a real thing on the inside of me. That was no confidence, insecure. And um, I was an imposter, literally an imposter. So I really went to town when it came to talking about and learning about authority, the authority in Jesus, the authority that Jesus left us with. He left us with all authority. It's not some authority and it's not, you know, little authority or big authority. It, he left us with his authority. He left us with his authority. Like he left us with him. He left him on the inside of us. Now you're probably saying, well, Julianne, how is that even true? Do you know how I feel? Do you know what my situation looks like? I get it. Trust me. You know, when there is pain in your body and there is some kind of a sickness that is literally taking up every ounce of your energy, every moment of your day, every moment of your thoughts, what happens is that it literally smothers you. It consumes you. It drowns you. It changes your personality. You become, you be some, not all, not all. I'm going to say not all, but most people that I know makes you feel like a victim. It makes you feel like you really feel insecure. It makes you feel that you are isolated and nothing is ever going to change. Trust me, and I know that you guys probably already have felt that many times, many times. So that is how it's trying to make you feel, but that's not what it can do to you unless you allow it, unless you say, okay, you know, unless you lay down with it, unless you succumb to it, unless you start to feel sorry for yourself, because that is a that, that is rough to feel sorry for yourself when you're fighting against something. Now, when I say fighting against, I don't mean you're fighting like this. I mean that spiritually, your the word of God is fighting against anything that is not of God. Okay? We fight against principalities. We do not fight against flesh and blood. So when we fight the words of our mouth, our mouth is our biggest weapon. So we're fighting with our mouth. We're fighting with our mouth. Let me say that again. You're fighting with your mouth. And the fight is, okay, the fight. It's not like, again, it's not like you're in a, you know, a, a fencing competition or you got your boxing gloves on and you're, you know, punching each other out. The fighting is the, the words the word of God, the scripture that you stand on, the scripture that has become yours, the scripture that is true, the scripture that changes your identity, that scripture that gives you that authority that makes you bold, okay? So Genesis 1, you know, this is the first thing that I learned about authority that literally changed my life. I had, I please hear me on this. I had to get this in, this literally, tattooed on the inside of my heart. I had to get this so cl clear, so plain and clear on the inside of my heart that I could not think outside of this. I had to stay focused on what Genesis 126 said to me because it was in the beginning, right? Genesis one, we haven't even made it to Genesis chapter two yet. We're still in chapter one. And he told me who I was. And this is Old Testament. So that already was empowering. Now let's take it into the New Testament where the finished work happened on the cross. That means we're not finishing it ourselves. We are, he finished it and we're living in that finished work. Please understand me. We're not finishing it. 
Don't think that you're helping God out. You're finishing his finished work. Do you know what I'm saying? Can you understand that? Okay. Then God said, let us make man in our image. Genesis 1, 26. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Well, did that just cover everything? So it says, um, let them have dominion. That's authority over the fish of the sea. The, that's deep below. The birds in the air. The cattle over all the earth and every over all the earth. Okay, let's look at the earth, right? Here's the earth. Here's all the different, you know, <laughs> this is not a this is not astrology class here at all. But here's all the other planets, right? The earth, the earth over all the earth. Go look at, you know, the earth on Google over that. It would be great. Google earth, right? Over all the earth, he gave us dominion. He gave man dominion. He gave man and woman, you, me, us, man and woman. And this is not even, well, what I love about this is remember, this is not people that are saved. This is Old Testament. This is not for all you. Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the, over the fish of the sea, birds of the air, cattle, earth, creeping thing if they are saved. Well, Jesus wasn't, Jesus was already, you know, he already knew his, his, um, his future. But at this point, Jesus was not on the earth. This was God speaking to his people. Meaning us, us, we are, we, we are, we were, we are, we'll always be his people. Now with the new Testament, it's a whole different story. You have all this authority and dominion because of what Jesus did, right? Because of what Jesus did, not because of what you've done. So over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. By the way, hello, Angela, Danette, Karen, Sherry, um, Chrissy, Barbara, Sean, Dorota, I believe, Sophia, you were created in his image and according to his likeness, you were created in his image. You can't even get away from that. Even the worst person in the world was created in God's image according to his likeness, okay? So he says he created him, okay, so God created man in his own image in the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Then God, God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Over everything that moves on the earth. Over everything that moves on the earth. And listen, there's some pretty creepy, weird things that are moving on the earth, but that's what he says is that we have dominion over the fish of the sea. And it repeats it. Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every creeping thing that creeps and moves on the earth. And he keeps repeating this in Genesis over and over and over and over. So I'm going to repeat this to you. I talk a lot about authority. I believe I've even done a, a teaching. So this is part two of the authority that makes us bold. But our main scripture that we're basing this on is Genesis 126, right? And we have the authority in many, many different ways. Um, well, one being, let's see where am I, where I put that note, um, is also, uh, Acts 1.8, it says, but you shall receive power and the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will, uh, you shall be witnesses to me. Now I want to go take this a little further than what it says. And I'll tell you that in a minute, but you see, you shall receive power. So the authority, the, the dominion that we had in the old Testament, now we're talking the new Testament. So not only do we have dominion, but now it says that we 
receive power when the Holy Spirit came upon you, right? When you got saved, he was in you, but now it's come upon you. And that is where the boldness and the power comes from. Uh, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem. Now I say, where are, you know, where is it that you live? I've seen the UK, I've seen Scotland, I see France, um, I see, uh, I'm not sure, oh yeah, Dorota is the, the Polish version of the English Dorothy. That's so cool, thanks for letting us know that. Uh, from Texas, right? We, get, we have Texas, so your Jerusalem is where you live, all right? Say, my Jerusalem is my, and then say your city, say your state, say your state. So my Jerusalem, I would read it this way. And, uh, but you, uh, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in California. Okay. Then all Judea, this is just me. I did this it's for fun. All Judea is, or Judea, Judea is um, all my grocery stores. All my grocery stores, whether it's the beauty supply store, whether it's a um, Sprouts, Ralph's, uh, Pavilions, what other store? Shoe store, the mall, wherever there is a store, that's my Judea. Uh, Samaria is, um, I know this sounds crazy, but this is what I've chosen for myself. Samaria is my nail salon, my hair salon, um, the cleaners, um, let's see, the whatever else that you do that, that does a service for you, right? Um, an esthetician, right? There's all kinds of things, you know, your vet, <laughs> your doctors, like whatever there is a service, that is your Samaria. And um, then it says, and to the ends of the earth. So when I say the ends of the earth, to me, that means airplanes, trains, buses, cars, Ubers, taxis, all of that. All right. I'm breaking that down. So, but you shall receive power and the Holy Spirit came upon you, which that is what happened when you got filled, baptized with the Holy Spirit. So because of that, you have all of this. You have, you have power and his authority. You have his power from the Holy Spirit and the authority because you have dominion on the earth and all these places in your life. Is that exciting? I think you should be getting up and going, woo! That's amazing. Because that's really what it is. Um, it's awesome. And I love this too, because um, let me go to Acts 4. Let's see. This is something that, um, that we're praying over our congregation on Sundays at the park. And then also... Um, our, our Bible study on Wednesday nights. And it says, and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. So right now in the name of Jesus, the place that we're gathering is YouTube and Facebook on Healing Journeys Today platforms. And I believe that right now in Jesus name, that <clears throat> now that we are praying that the place where you are sitting right now will shake and it will be filled with the Holy Spirit in your bedroom, your living room, your car, your kitchen, your job, wherever you are, no matter what year it is. And you will, and all will be filled with the Holy Spirit and that you will speak the word of God with boldness over your own situation, over someone else's situation, but you will speak the word with boldness on the inside of you. You no longer will speak the word, hoping and a praying that it works. The word works. The word works. That, there's a period there. The word works, period. The word works, period. So we are really, if you think, if you really take this in for truth, what are you lacking? Not one dang thing. 
You're not lacking anything, Barbara. You're not lacking anything, gorgeous whales. You're not lacking anything, Peggy. You're not lacking anything. That was Acts 4. Um, oh, dang, I just, hold on. Acts 4, I wrote it down, but then I didn't keep it, so hold on. Acts 4.31, yeah. You have authority. You have every, <clears throat> everything that God had on this earth, he gave to you. Everything that Jesus fought for, ended, began, you have as well. You see, he beat the devil. Why do we keep on digging up the grave of the devil? and giving him all the glory for all the attacks going on, for all the, the evil work that he's doing. Why don't we wake up in the mornings instead of saying that, well, the devil's trying to attack my body again. Why don't we say, thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful day, this grand and glorious day. I know that you are Lord of my life, and I praise you, Father, that you are my everything. You're my day. You're my evening. You're my afternoon. You're in every part of my life. My lips will speak your word continuously. Uh, your, your word drips like honey on my lips. It is sweet and the fragrance smells amazing. That is what we talk about. And if you can't think of anything else, you say, Jesus, you know, there are songs that have Jesus in it. You know, there's a song that says, Jesus, lover of my soul. You know, what if that's all you can say, Jesus, lover of my soul, you know, if it's um, uh, turn your eyes, I will turn my eyes upon you, Jesus. Um, you know, Jesus loves me. <laughs> this I know. You know, it's like, what is it that you can even sing out your heart? Because whatever is in your heart is coming out of your mouth. It really is. So just know that, that, that out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth is speaking. And so, you know, that's really important to know because we say a lot of things and it really gets us in trouble because we literally can cut, like we can literally cut off the flow of the magnitude of the Holy Spirit by cutting ourselves off with negative words, negative actions. I'm not even talking about negative thoughts. Yeah, negative thoughts come in, but we, we replace them with the word of God. We replace them with thoughts of the Lord, not just positive thoughts. Positive is great. Positive thinking is wonderful, but positive thinking is just that. When you're speaking the word of God, you're speaking life into you. You're reading that word and it's bringing life to your mortal body. And that is awesome. You know, he told us in Mark 16, this is one of my, this is like my, this is my foundational scripture besides Genesis 126, but this one is too. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And that is the condemnation does not come from the Lord. You will be condemned because you rejected Jesus. You can't be in heaven with Jesus when you don't believe in him, when you have had no relationship with him because you don't even know who he is, right? Like why... I like, for instance, I would not go live with the man down the street uh, because I don't know him. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of dumb, but I wouldn't just go move in and say, hey, I'm spending the rest of my years on this earth in your house. I, I would be like, I don't know. I don't know you people. Is there a room for me? Like, you know, I know it's a dumb analogy, but it's kind of the same. I don't know them. I can't stay with them. Um. Who does not believe in me will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. 
And if they drink anything deadly, it will not by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They will recover. That means that they will they will experience the freedom and the healing that Jesus fought for. So keep that scripture, like put a big old post-it in your Bible where that scripture is, because that is a very important scripture. Very important. It's important that we know that we keep that scripture in our mouth, because when things start to rise up against you, right? He says that, when things rise up, when any tongue comes up and tries to condemn, it tries to accuse you or say something mean or whatever, you condemn it with your own mouth. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And any tongue that rises up against you, you will condemn. Any tongue that rises up against you for my sake, for Jesus' sake, Jesus is the reason why they're rising up against you. Okay, <laughs> just know that. Jesus is the very reason why they're rising up against you. So, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And any tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you will condemn. Why? Because, you're, because the word of God coming out of your mouth is powerful. That's why. Let's say that again. The word of God coming out of your mouth is powerful. The word of God coming out of your mouth is powerful. The word of God coming out of your mouth is powerful. The word of God coming out of God's mouth is powerful, but he's not here. He's in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is in you right now. If you have said yes to Jesus, if you haven't, please let me know on this feed and we will lead you into the kingdom on this broadcast. So the everything you need is already, is already on the inside of you. That's why you can be bold with the authority from the Lord. That's why boldness is what it is. It's bold. And it, and it gets the job done. Like it, whatever, whatever needs to be fixed will be fixed. Whatever needs to be put back in order will be put back in order. Whatever needs to be condemned out there word-wise, you will condemn because you have boldness. And you're not afraid to go out and speak. You're not afraid of the persecution. The one thing that Jesus said we would have is persecution. You're not afraid of it. You're not afraid of it. Say, I'm not afraid of persecution. Say it. I'm not afraid of persecution. As a matter of fact, you need to know this. When you are persecuted, then that means you are right smack dab in the middle of God's will. Boy, is that awesome. You know, we would normally take that as, oh my God, I'm being persecuted. I'm weak. I'm this, I'm that. I'm, you know, where are you, God? He says, no, you're right there where you need to be. You're right there where you need to be. Because I told you, you would have persecution. And so with that comes all of heaven backing you up. It's not just you. It's all of heaven backing you up. So when you say no, it's a no, no. <laughs> It's a yes, it's yes, 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 right? But no matter what, I don't care how you feel. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what you have said. I don't care what your situation is looking like. You still, whether you choose to use it or not, right? This is Julianne, the passionate one. Whether you choose to use it or not, it's still in you. It can lie dormant if you want but it's still in you, still in you, still in you. I have, uh, we have, um, let's see, is it Tammy? Tammy White. 
I have a question about the authority that makes me bold. I was born with something like spinal bifida and had paralysis of lower left leg. Right leg was also paralyzed after surgery, but came back. That was from God. I believe that. I'm very bold and stubborn and love Jesus and know that he loves me. How do I answer others that question my belief since I'm still having paralysis? Ooh, this is good. Persecution means right where I'm supposed to be. Yes. Okay. So let me just say this, Tammy. I'm so glad that you put that question that I that you asked that question. Does 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 it does it mean if you're not seeing 100% of that of your healing coming forth, does that mean you're not healed? And here's your answer. No. Healing was already given to you when you said yes to Jesus. When you said yes, you took on everything that he well, again, the finished work. It was finished. Healing, deliverance, provision, all of it, never to be separated from God again. He got separated from the Lord so that we would never have to be separated from him. So sometimes it takes a little bit of a time to get that in our heads. Well, wait a minute, I'm already healed. So what is going on in my body, right? So I know that you, I'm sure have been speaking to your body, but it doesn't stop. You don't yell at your body because your body, because you can you don't yell at your body because it's a, it's a habit. You are speaking directly to those symptoms and you're saying no. And what a great testimony that you are, that no matter what it looks like, you are not backing down. So the people around you that are persecuting you, the people around you that are going, yeah, right, Tammy, look at you. All of those people, they are, they do not know what they're talking about. They're the ones where Jesus said, forgive them for what they do not know. You know the truth and the truth has set you free. The truth is the truth. The truth is by his stripes, Tammy, you were healed. That could be Tammy. That could be Lydia. That could be um, uh, anybody, Barbara, all these people. That's Julianne. So by his stripes, I know I'm healed. I know I'm healed. I know I walk around as a healed person. Have I had symptoms come against me? Well, look what happened to me. That's why this whole platform started. Yes, there were many times where that happened. And it tried to take me down for several years until I found out, wait a minute. This, this, that finished work was done. I'm not the finisher of it. Jesus was the finisher of it. I don't finish it. It was already done. And anybody that would look at me that would say, that is, you don't love Jesus. You don't know God because you don't know the word that I stand on. You don't know the word that I know is true in my own heart. Whether I see, whether you see what you're looking for or not, God calls me healed. Remember Isaiah 53, four was way before any of us were born right? And then in uh, 1 Peter 2, 24, Peter repeats uh, what the, uh, the prophet said, but Peter was an eyewitness to what Jesus did. He witnessed what Isaiah the prophet prophesied. That's awesome. He witnessed it. So that's why you can say, I'm healed. Don't even go into like, I'm healed, but I haven't seen the manifestation. Stop it. Stop all of that. There's no buts. And there's no, there's nothing in this Bible that talks about I'm healed, but I'm waiting for the manifestation. I'm healed right now by his stripes, not by my stripes, not by my, my doctors. Yes, they, you could have gone to them and that you did. And great, great. But they're not the healer. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is your healer. Jesus is your healer. No matter how many people helped you get there, right? Jesus is still your healer. So what I would say to those people, you guys, you don't even have a clue who Jesus is because you're asking me, you're trying to, trying to trick me or corner me and put me in a place to where you want me to say that God's word isn't true. Hello, this sounds a little bit like Job and his friends. Get rid of those friends. They're either going to believe like you or you don't need to be around them. And I talk, and that's for family as well. That is for family as well. So anyway, that's my, my take on that, Tammy. And yes, we are going to be persecuted. Ex get excited. 
celebrate it. Woo! <laughs> celebrate it because you know that you're where you're supposed to be. You know, um, many years ago, I took our girls to a Jesus culture conference. And so at all the breaks, they would send us all out into the city and to start praying with people. And when we came back, we could get up on stage and give testimonies. And I love what they would do. They would have the ones that rejected give the testimonies first. And it was a celebration of, hey, I tried it. I got rejected. They told me to get away from them, but I did it, right? That's exciting. That is so awesome, right? So let's celebrate that. We're looking at it as, oh, I'm defeated. I don't know Jesus as well as I thought. You know, all these excuses and reasons and all that stuff. But it's the opposite of that. It is the opposite of that. By his stripes, you were healed. By his stripes, you were healed. And Jesus performed the healings that Isaiah was talking about. And so right now, I lay my hand on this computer and I say, by his stripes, body, respond right now to the healing power that's on the inside of me. It could be on the inside of you, but right now I'm saying me in Jesus' name. For anybody that is sick, that is hearing the sound of my voice right now, in the name of Jesus, be healed right now in Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet in Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for giving us that ability to say whatever we, what we can cast out demons, we can speak in tongues, we can heal the sick, we can cleanse the lepers. Jesus did all that for us. These are not suggestions. It wasn't a story about a guy that once lived and did that. Yes, because that guy still lives. That guy is still living on the inside of all of us. So let's be bold with the authority that Jesus left us with, that God gave us from the very beginning, the authority that we were given, the dominion of this earth and everything on it. So I love you guys. Be Again, keep watching all these teachings. They're awesome. I love them all. I listen to them. These teachers are amazing and they all have the truth on the inside of them and they are just giving you that truth. They're just taking it from their heart and handing it over to you. So don't forget to watch Colleen tonight. She'll be on at six o'clock Pacific time. We're all over the place, but we do everything by Pacific time. She'll be on at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Tomorrow morning, we have the wonderful Nicole Marbach. Then we have myself and my husband talking about marriage Wednesday night. And then you know the rest. Thursday morning, Cindy, Mike. Then we have our guest teacher, which is my friend, Joelle Hussey. Joelle was also, oh, you're going to love this. Joelle was one of my, um, she was on, on the journey. And she dealt with fear and anxiety crippling, like in my house, I can't move for 30 years. So she's got some great teaching and she starts on Friday morning. So love you all. And uh, we will see you tomorrow night on Healing Journeys Today.